there's one thing I really don't like about Notion, and that's that I didn't know about it when I started university. It's just such an incredibly powerful tool and can make your life that much easier. Unfortunately, I only learned about it during the last year of university, but I still wanted to build a template for students like you to make at least your life a bit easier. So here it is. This video will be a walkthrough of the template and all the functions. You can download it for free with the link in the description, but make sure to watch the video so that you know exactly how to use it. It's a perfect study planner in Notion to make your life easier, to record all the assignments and stay on top of them, to take notes that actually work for you, and to implement research-based study techniques. So with that being said, let's dive right in. Have a closer look at your student hub in Notion template. The first thing that you see when you download template is this dashboard, which acts as your one place to find pretty much all the information that you need to and to quickly navigate to every area. As you can see, it's separated into three columns. On the very left, you see your courses and your current courses sorted alphabetically. In the middle, your assignments, and on the right, your semester progress. So the first thing that you wanna do when you uh, open this template uh, and add it to your workspace is to create a new entry for your semester progress. So you just click on new and you can type, okay, we are now maybe uh, in the fall uh, semester 2022. And then you can open this and set the duration. So in term duration, you simply say, okay, maybe this one goes from September 1st and then toggle on end time, September 1st until let's say um, November 30th. And now if you close this again, you see that it starts calculating your term progress. So as you go through the semester, you'll always know, okay, how much time exactly do I have left to finish all the things I need to do. Now let's take a closer look at the middle part, upcoming assignments, super, super useful. So you can keep track of all the things you need to do. So assignments, exams, you know, all the things with a deadline that you need to produce during your semester or like in the next one live here and it shows you the things that are coming up. So you see it's sorted by, uh, you have like three uh, categories here this week, uh, this month, and then quite a bit more time, and it's sorted by uh, the exact due date. You see the type of the assignment, okay, what is it? Uh, your course, if you uh, connect it to a course for which you have to do it, and then, okay, how many days do I have left exactly? And of course, then also the deadline. And if you want to not uh, see that much information, you can always switch to list view, right? Then you just have like a more minimal version that shows you, okay, this is due today. Here you have five days remaining and so on. Down below, you have space to uh, embed your calendar. If you want to see your schedule, I would recommend to just uh, add your GCal link here if you have one. There are two ways to do this. Either you just get a sharing link from your Google Calendar and embed it here. That will give you like the normal Google Calendar look. Or if you want to... Uh, change the layout a little bit, I would recommend that you go to a website called indify.co and there they have this cool calendar widget and with that one you can simply uh, connect any calendar. In this case I've connected my uh, a random one of mine and then you can set the view, right? Which view do you want to have? Do you want to see the month? Do you want to see the week? You can um, change a few things. So for example I want to start my week on Monday and uh, then also give it a background color. So if you wanted to go with like a with the um, uh, the yellow from the template, something more like that. We could uh, do that for the, oops, actually not for the current time indicator. Let's do that for the the background. Da, 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 da. Um, where do we, here, background color, and then go here with the, the yellow, and then uh, have this, uh, yeah, nicer look. And then we can just simply grab the uh, link when we're happy with it and go in here and then just paste it, pick embed, and now you see your calendar live updating in here. You can obviously like uh, adjust the size so it makes uh, sense. And you see everything that's coming up uh, automatically synced. So that's pretty neat. Let's remove this. Down you have an area to uh, add quick notes. So if you just uh, you know <laughs> want to quickly uh, write something down, you can do this here without having to navigate somewhere. Just drop it in here and later you'll see them all in an inbox so you don't miss anything and can go through them later. And down below, we have our revision area, which uh, is our uh, different take on how we should revise topics or how we can revise topics so that we don't need to make study plans. Instead, we use a technique called uh, retrospective revision timetable that I first learned about from Ali Abdal. It's really cool. We're going to talk about that later in more detail uh, when we get to that section. First though, let's uh, start with uh, the courses. So the course database, you can go through it either through that link or if you click on here, my courses, 
is uh, your place to record everything that you are taking in a semester. So you have, of course, the gallery view and then also a default view. And you can see, okay, uh, you have your courses. You can add a professor if you want and locations and the credits just for you as the organization so that you know um, what happens. If you're done with the course, you can archive it. That means it will disappear out of the sidebar, right? So if you're in the next semester and it's no longer relevant, you do that. And then you can uh, connect it to your topics and your assignments, notes, and the respective revision timetable. All these things we'll talk about in a second what that exactly means. But the cool thing about this template is that if you create uh, a course, so let's say a um, new course uh, for the semester, and you open it, you have the option to uh, load in a template. And uh, this template will give you a dashboard for that course that automatically uh, pulls in all the information across your workspace in here. So you see in, at one glance, okay, what are your assignments uh, for this course? Uh, what are your notes? What are your revisions? And any important links. So when you sit in class, you only have to open one page in Notion, this one, the specific course one, and you can write your notes from there. You can do take um, record anything important. You can uh, say, uh, record that you have an assignment coming up and so on and so on and it's all in one place. Moving on to the next uh, part, and that would be our um, assignments. So assignments, very simple. Again, you uh, have uh, a database, and in this database, you can uh, record all your courses. And when you uh, add something, you can either add an assignment or an exam, right? So to distinguish between something that you have to write until a point and something where you need to be prepared at some point, and then if you uh, do one, you can always um, connect it to a course. So you know, okay, this belongs to this course. You can set your deadline. And then when you're done, you can tick it off to know that, uh, yeah, it's over. And as you can see, as long as you have no deadline set, template will also remind you that for this thing, there's nothing in yet. So let's, oops, remove these two entries again. Cool. Um, moving on to the next part, that would be your, um, Let's take notes first. Yeah, <laughs> your notes. Uh, notes is a cool thing uh, in that um, <laughs> taking notes in class uh, during university or in school is actually a fairly debated topic. Uh, there are a lot of studies around effectiveness of notes and the general consensus uh, seems to be that um, while taking notes isn't generally bad, like uh, there are some study techniques that are just really, really bad, like rereading your notes. If you want to learn more about that, I'll leave some links in the description. But um, yeah, when it comes to taking notes, the problem isn't so much that like note taking itself is bad, but that taking good notes is really hard. Because if you just transcribe what it, uh, the professor says in front of you, you get really, really little out of that. So this template tries to help you uh, take smarter notes, uh, better notes. And that's why there are two types of templates uh, in here for your notes. You have really smart notes and explain it like M5. And this is based on the idea that if you want to take good notes, you need to engage on a higher level with uh, the content that you're writing down than just, okay, professor said this, I'm writing it down. And even if you say, okay, I'm writing it down in my own words, uh, that's still like not ideal if you just like uh, summarize basically what the teacher is saying. So instead, what you should focus on is to write down questions. Um, because the professor will give you answers, right? So you already need to think a lot about it. You need to reverse engineer to the point, okay, what would be the question to what the professor just said? And then uh, the good thing is you can then later go in and use your questions to actually study the topic. Because most of the time, you actually don't need to record the information that the professor is giving you in the lecture because there will be textbooks, there will be so many other places, right, to get the information uh, again if you actually need to. You don't need to write it down. So it's much uh, more efficient to write down the questions and then use that later. And again, this um, template for the smart notes is trying to gear you towards that. You can record, of course, the resources for it, uh, but then you have your rules of what to do and you can write down your questions. And if you want, if you have the time, you can also write down answers, but actually it's surprisingly easy to find the answers to your questions later on if you have them. So I would recommend that you even sometimes skip that. Of course, you can connect then uh, your notes to the specific course where it took place, and then to the topics. We're going to talk about that again in a second. But yes, so this, that's the one template, and the other template is your explaining like I'm five template. This one is helping you to, when you have like a really difficult topic where it's not enough to <laughs> write down questions and you really need to think through it, uh, this one will help you apply the Feynman technique, which is a technique 
to foster understanding for really complex topics. And it basically guides you through five steps to, uh, in this case, actually write a summary of the topic, but do it in a structured way where you really try to think from first principles and really try to uncover what it actually is that you don't understand. Because most of the times when we uh, don't understand something, um, the biggest issue is that we don't even know what our main problem is, right? If, our, if we knew our main problem with the understanding, we could go out and look for the answer in the textbooks, we could ask the professor, we could ask our classmates. But most of the time, there's just confusion. And this Feynman technique is super helpful at helping you get rid of this confusion, organize your thoughts, and then really, really understand something. It takes a lot more time, of course, than writing down questions, so you should reserve this for like the really hard problems in your course in your study, the ones where you really struggle with the understanding and not just by default write this for every little thing. Okay, let's remove them and go to the next part and that would now finally be topics. And topics is a really, really cool thing in this template. I wish I had this when I was in university because the problem with uh, structuring your notes uh, about a university or about your classes is usually that um, one course rarely only covers one topic right and oftentimes one topic that you learn in like a first semester of your studies will appear later on and then you need to know about it again and if you organize it in your you know google drive folder or so all your notes then you always have to jump back and forth between the years and you never have them connected in one place well this sort of uh, aims to solve this problem by introducing something uh, called global tags so how does it work well, let's just look at uh, the database part. So you see, uh, we can add simple topics to our database that act as uh, the yeah, bigger uh, categories or as tags. And then we can say, okay, well, in our course family law, we talked about the issue of representation. Or in contract law, we talked about uh, two things. We talked about contracts and about damages. And now if you have a different course that talks about the same thing, instead of having to you know, create something separate, you just say, okay, actually we also talked about damages in tort law. So as you can see here, uh, you have now two areas and you have your, um, you have uh, tort law and uh, contract law connected. And when you then look at your notes, you can see everything that you've ever written down about damages. So you see, this will pull in all notes, not just the ones from contract law or not just the ones from tort law, but everything where you talked about this related topic. And this will make it much easier to connect your thoughts, to connect your notes, and to ensure that instead of, you know, learning in isolated silos of, okay, this course this semester, this course that semester, you actually build understanding in the field that you're studying. Of course, the challenge then becomes, uh, okay, how, what topics do I pick, right? That really depends on your study and your field. If you're actually in a field where every course only covers one specific topic, it's self-contained and won't appear much in other um, classes, then you can just pick the main topic, right? And you could just have a topic family law here. But if it's like in most uh, fields where you have um, a lot of individual topics inside one course, then I would recommend that you probably look at the, the outline for your course, right? Look at the main headers uh, or the main lesson types, that's usually a good indication for the topics that will be covered in an area. And that way you also build like a rough overview, right? A basic understanding of what uh, does, what belongs to this topic. And then as you go on, you'll be able to unify your topics and uh, really make these connections. And uh, these topics will also help you revise. That's now the last part or nearly the last part uh, to, to talk about the retrospective revision timetable. As I already said, this will help you to um, study things without having to spend so much time on making a plan for your studies, right? We all know uh, this feeling that we, we have so many topics to study and uh, to make sure that we get it done, we spend like a lot of time, probably one of uh, two days, making like this very elaborate plan, when are we going to repeat what? And then uh, one week in we realized, okay, that plan is totally wrong, it doesn't work at all, and we have to uh, do it all over again. The retrospective revision timetable tries to solve this by instead of planning out what you learn, you simply always record when you learn something and when it's in the next time to look at something and study it, instead of you know going in for this complex list, you just pick the topic that um, has the uh, weakest score where you need to study most. This has a few benefits. First, you save the time that you usually waste on creating these elaborate plans and actually use them to study a topic. 
Second, if you uh, make a strict plan, the issue is that it's really hard to anticipate how well you be, uh, you'll be performing at a specific topic, right? If we need now to learn tort law, like damages uh, and representation also, and we uh, realize uh, while studying, okay, representation is actually fairly easy, but well, I planned like three sessions for that this week. Now, either I have to change my plan or I will just keep practicing something easy so I get less out of my study time. Well, with the retrospective revision team table, we put that, <laughs> uh, we uh, approach it reverse. We add all our topics, right? And we, we will see them down here. And to each topic, we've add uh, a level. And by default, it will be always new because we've never studied it. Now, whenever we have study time, so instead of, you know, planning, okay, I'm going to study contracts here and damages there, we just plan for general study time. And when we have study time, we look at this retrospective revision timetable and make a decision in the moment of what we're going to study. So the way this works is we look at it and we see, okay, what have we never studied or what have we studied and is really, really bad so far. And of course, this will be influenced by the assignments that are coming up. But uh, assuming that you need to learn everything until a certain point, uh, you look at it and the first thing that you should probably uh, study are new topics. Because if you study something for the first time, the marginal utility that you get out of it will be the highest, right? You do, can get the most out of the things that you never looked at. And um, if you have the non-new topics left, uh, you continue looking at uh, the weaknesses, right? So before you study something again that was green, that was good, you will study something that was weak. And then after every study session, all you do is you go in here and say, okay, today it's the 14th uh, of September and I studied the topic, um, let's say, damages and contracts. So you first see that on the card, you now see, okay, what's the last date that you studied something at? And then uh, you uh, give it a rating, like how good was it? So contracts I studied today, that was actually weak, uh, but damages I did, and I did really, really well on them. So now next time you look at this table, you'll see, okay, I should probably look at contracts or representation again. And if you make, have to make a decision between two things that have the same weakness, you can use the last time you uh, uh, revised it. And then it makes sense to uh, go for the topic that you did uh, longer ago. So in that case, it would make sense to look at representation because it was a weak topic and you looked at it last four months ago. So you probably might want to spend some time on it again. And that way you make sure that you always practice the thing that will give you the most uh, out of your study time. Of course, if you have now an exam coming up uh, in damages and representation and contracts are far off, uh, but this one is tomorrow, then look at it, even though it's good and you just recently did it. But in general, you want to then always go weak uh, or new first, then the weak on okay topics. And then within the same level, you want to go by the oldest. And that's it. Uh, that's the student hub in Notion. There are a few more little things like you can add your quick resources, of course, here, and you can play around uh, with the notes uh, to take various uh, notes there. But that's the essence of it. It's one place to organize your whole studies. You can organize all your courses, your assignments, your notes, and it even will help you take a better notes during class and then better uh, revise things better later. Oh yeah, uh, one thing I quickly forgot. Uh, if you then add the topics right and you, you looked at it, you just opened the topic and the cool thing is it will show you all the notes that belong to it, right? Because you tagged the notes according to the topics. So they will all appear in here. So yeah, uh, just really, really useful to save you some time. Hope you enjoyed. Again, the link to download it is in the description. It's free. Uh, and if you find it helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could share it with anyone else who might find this useful. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. I'll be sure to answer it. In the description, besides the link to download the template, you'll also find a bunch of other resources. For example, if you want to learn more about Notion and need a complete course, it's also there. And last but not least, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you never miss one of these awesome ways to use Notion in your life. See you in the next one.